Molecular bonding video lecture. A molecular bond is a covalent bond that's formed by sharing electrons. So if we take a look here, these two electrons, if we look, the atoms overlap. So these two electrons are being shared by these atoms. This is different from an ionic bond where we would have one atom like lithium and it would give up an atom to be claimed by chlorine. Okay. Here we see a shared, we see sharing of electrons. Covalent bonds are formed between nonmetals. As we said before, it involves a sharing of electrons. These have a low melting point. So salt does not melt in the kitchen. Salt has a very high melting point. And if you remember, salt is NaCl, cation, anion, metal, nonmetal. Therefore, this is an ionic compound. So ionic compounds have a high melting point, while sugar, a covalent compound, has a lower melting point. This leads us to understand that covalent compounds, covalent bonds, are not as strong as ionic bonds. So again, remember, if we find our zigzag line, our zigzag line on the periodic table is going to help us determine where our metalloids are. And determining our metalloids are going to be important because when we take a look anything on this left side of the periodic table is a metal. Anything on this right side of the periodic table is a nonmetal. So if we have something from the left, if we have a metal bonded with a nonmetal, this is an ionic compound. And if we have a nonmetal, nonmetal bond, that's our covalent bond. A molecule is the term given to a group of two or more atoms bonded covalently. So there's your key word again, covalently. This sharing of electrons. Not the transferring of electrons like sodium chloride, but the sharing of electrons. Now we have multiple types of covalent bonds. In this, in this covalent bond between chlorine and bromine, we'll have one pair of electrons being shared. So that is a single covalent bond. We would see chlorine, one electron, one electron, bromine. So each of those lines means one pair, which means two total electrons. If we have two pairs, this means that it's a double bond. A double bond would be like something between oxygen. Here we have four total electrons, or two pairs. Our last type would be between three pairs, which would be a triple bond, like something between nitrogen. Here, three lines means three pairs, meaning six total electrons. Now, covalent molecules, some of our atoms like to exist, like we saw here, oxygen, nitrogen, as diatomic molecules. The prefix di means two. Atomic refers to atoms. So our diatomic molecules are going to be two atoms of the same element. If we use the mnemonic device, I have no bright or clever friends, this gives us our seven diatomic molecules. The I stands for iodine. The H stands for hydrogen. The N for nitrogen. The BR for bromine. The O for oxygen. The CL for chlorine. And the F for fluorine. So one of the things that you should notice is that it's fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So here are our halogens, and then is oxygen and nitrogen, and then with hydrogen also.
So, are the following diatomic elements? Carbon is not, so the symbol for carbon is going to be C. Sulfur is not, so it's S. Chlorine, whenever we see chlorine, we are now going to assume it to be Cl2, because we know chlorine is a diatomic. Sodium is Na, neon Ne, calcium Ca. Now we see oxygen. Oxygen will be O2 because it's a diatomic molecule.